Presenting History's Best on PBS. 1945. The promise of the atom. Nuclear energy would power the nation. The bomb would end all war. But with the bomb comes an explosion of fear. Fallout. Just one in a series of extraordinary films. People's Century, tonight. Brought to you by Conseco, where we believe that leaping at certain financial opportunities can make a secure financial future harder to grasp. Conseco, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. Major funding for People's Century was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Additional funding was provided by the Lowell Institute. July 1945 With the Second World War still raging, scientists are about to conduct a secret experiment. They know what should happen in theory. Now they'll see if it works in practice. Berlin Brixner is the team cameraman. Pretty soon it was minutes before zero, then it was seconds, and uh, my camera is turned on automatically, and then I looked through the viewfinder, and I was looking straight at the bomb uh, where it would explode. I saw the ball of fire rising, and then I realized I had to get to the panoramic controls of the camera and follow the bomb up, and then I did follow the ball of fire rising. It was surrounded by a uh, luminous blue haze, a blue light, due to the high uh, radioactivity. With the first atomic explosion, the United States now has the weapon it believes can end the war. Well, I was so dumbfounded that I just sat there thinking about <laughs> the fact that uh, we had been successful in um, making the bomb and that soon the World War II would be at an end because we would now use that bomb on Japan. The forces will change the world. They promise a new age of scientific progress, but they also unleash fear and paranoia, casting a shadow over the lives of millions for the rest of the century. The nuclear age began with an arms race, conducted in utmost secrecy in the early 1940s. Huge processing plants were hurriedly built by the United States Army in a desperate attempt to develop an atomic bomb before Germany. At Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 
78,000 people worked in the largest of the secret factories. Among them was a young mechanical engineer from Lehigh University. We had a sense that, that what we were doing was important, and it may indeed change things if we, if we succeeded. And even though we did not know exactly, maybe some did, don't get me wrong, but the large por portion of us did not know exactly what we were doing. But there was this sense that, that we were doing something that was important to the war effort. And if we succeeded, it would make a change. With an eye to history, the project leaders later reenacted the moment when they produced an entirely new substance. Here it is, General Groves. Plutonium. Well, that's the uh, first I've ever seen. But uh, after this, if you don't mind, I wish you'd... Uh, hold something under it, because after all, there's about over $50 million in that too. Though the secret weapon had been built with Germany in mind, the war in Europe was now over. The bomb was to be used against Japan. Two bombs were flown to the island of Tinian in the Pacific and prepared by a team from the Los Alamos laboratory. Harold Agnew was one of the young researchers. When the bomb was being loaded, we had some felt marking pens. And most everybody involved had written their names on it with some nasty remarks for the emperor or Hirohito or whoever it was. That, uh, and we usually put our families, you know, our wives' names, daughters' names, and just saying this is a present. We had an intense hatred. It's the only way to describe it, the Japanese. Every week, 25,000 Chinese being killed. I don't know how many we were losing every week, and every day I think was crucial to ending the war. Some scientists had misgivings, but the final decision to go ahead and use the weapon was made in Washington. The target would be the port of Hiroshima. Harold Agnew flew as an observer. 21 days after the New Mexico experiment, a B-29 was over Hiroshima carrying an atomic bomb. At 8.15 in the morning of August 6th, Japanese time, the first atomic bomb struck an enemy target. We did get a flash of light in the cabin, so we know it had gone off. And I know I wrote in my notebook, wow, it really went off, it really did. Thirty-one thousand feet below, Akira Ishida was riding a streetcar on his way to work in the center of Hiroshima. I saw a bright flash. It was like lightning, a thunderbolt. It was so intense I was blinded for a second. I passed out immediately. When I came round, my brother and I realized that we were buried under the bodies of all the passengers on the tram who died when the bomb went off. We were suffocating. The destruction was unlike anything ever seen. In an instant, 71,000 people had died. All the passengers in Akira Ishida's streetcar were killed, except him and his brother. They started walking. Sitting on stone steps covered by blackened debris was a woman. Her entire body was charred and her hair was completely burnt. She was embracing a red burnt baby in her arms and trying to breastfeed it with her red burnt nipples, calling the baby's name again and again. 
父を飲ませていらっしゃったんですね。